Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Greg Furman and this is the Forex Weekly Outlook for the week of May the 2nd, 2016. Now to get started this week we're going to do things a little differently from time to time. I like to change things up a little bit. So what I would like to do this week is basically present the argument to everybody what they should be looking at when they're doing their, their Forex trading, their commodity trading, stock trading because they're all tied together based around intermarket analysis. So when we look at the US dollar index last week uh, and what we've come up with is we can see that the driver, the equities basically are the driver for the US dollar. We can see that the Nikkei 225 has crossed to the downside. That's put additional downside pressure on the US dollar. When we look at the DAX 30, we can see as the DAX 30 loses its upside momentum, that is highly correlated to the US dollar, which indirectly affects our euro currency, which I'll talk about more in a minute. Then we have our gold contracts. We can see that as gold starts to push higher, again, putting additional pressure on the US dollar. Now, bear in mind that the majority of the Forex trading we do is buying or selling US dollars, either directly or indirectly, uh, through the cross pairs. So we want to look Look at all of these things and what real money is doing. Now we see a lot of different uh, types of analysis. We hear of Elliott Wave, Fibonacci, uh, the GAN theory, all these you know wild and wacky theories. But what what is real money doing? The real world intermarket correlations tell us what real money is doing. They are coming uh, out of US dollars. They are coming out of the global equity markets. They are going into things like oil and gold. So when we see our gasoline contracts as they start to rise, also putting pressure on the dollar. But one of the main correlated, uh, you know, correlated equity markets that I talked about is with the US dollar is, of course, the S&P 500. And as I've said in last week's presentation, it's a rather distorted disturbing looking chart when we go back one year we can see that there is an absolutely massive top at or about the, the 2115 level and we have failed yet again at this level so we do have support on the S&P 500 down around 2034 but that's an artificial floor that was put in by the Fed so as I also stated in last week's Forex Weekly Outlook that I didn't think that them interfering in the market, them of course meaning the FOMC, uh, again this is going to, it's unlikely that the S&P is going to make further gains based on that type of Fed intervention. So you know to simplify very complex fundamentals what we look for here is real world intermarket correlations and they are very very clear here. Uh, predominantly as of late we can see that oil is actually moving up with the US dollar for the most part. So if this is a true rally in oil then we would want the US dollar turning around and, and that's not quite happening just yet. So these are the kind of things we want to look for in, in our trading and again it's very very important important to understand these real world correlations. Now as we go into our individual Forex pairs again doing something a little different this week where we're going to look at the intermarket correlations uh, in real in real time basically what is driving some of these these currency pairs. So when we look at our Euro US currency then you know the position that I'll put forth to everybody that you should be looking at there's all kinds of different systems out there I know this better than anybody um, but when we talk about what is real money doing well we can see here here that basically with the what the euro needs as I talked about in last week's Forex Weekly Outlook is it needs the equity markets to sell off. So we've had a big push up on the euro US currency pair but the driver of that was not based around a Fibonacci level that was hit or you know complex fundamentals or GAN, the GAN theory, Elliott Wave, none of this had anything to do with this move. The fact of the matter is the equity market sold off and the immediate reaction was the Euro US started to rise higher. That is indisputable uh, and to even call that last week a week ahead before it even happened or to suggest this is what could happen even though we know that last week the majority of pundits and analysts said that Euro US was supposed to be at 110 this week if we remember this. Uh, well, it's not at 110, guys. It's at it's at one, almost at the 115 level, and there's a reason for that. Okay, and the reason is we have real world intermarket correlations that are driving it. The dollar index pushed lower again, fueling the euro rally. The equity markets, the S and P 500, and more importantly, the European equity markets, the DAX 30. As the DAX 30, you can see as the DAX 30 rises, the euro 
immediately sells off. Well, the same thing happened here. We've had several days warning that this was likely to happen on, on, the, on the DAX 30, and the euro responded by aggressively moving higher. It's a very easy trade if we know what to look for. I've also talked about the real world inner market correlation to gold. You know, even though I don't support gold as a long trade in 2016, I will support it much more in 2017 and 18. But in 2016, I'm still on the fence with a with a with a strong buy on gold here. I think that it, it's its upside is limited. However, we can see that we've had a big move up here, and the the, the inner market correlation here is basically indisputable. The euro is responding very positive to that moving to that gold moving up, and of course, the dollar index. You know, we can see the S and P 500. These are the types of inner market correlations we want to to be basically aware of. Now, what's interesting here is that again that inverse correlation here to oil and the the euro currency. So as oil pushes higher predominantly, what that has done is pushed the euro down. So this is where we see doing real world analysis, you know, is that we need oil Actually, if this is a true rally in the euro currency, the euro US currency or the euro across the board, we would look for oil to turn lower next week, not higher. So if the, if the euro continues to break higher, then what we're going to see here, guys, is we are going to see oil turn lower. But it's very unlikely that oil and the euro are going to go up and up at the same time, just to be clear. So when we when we look at our major currencies here, the euro is a major currency, okay? Now the, the other pair that is a major currency is Great Britain US. So when we're looking at Forex, these are big, everything, all our cross pairs, they either run off the, the euro, the British pound, you know, the Swiss franc, but it's basically still tied indirectly to the US dollar. Now, when we look at the British pound here, our intermarket correlation is indisputable. We can see that the British pound uh, predominantly does not actually like it when the DAX is going higher. When the DAX, predominantly, when the DAX is going higher, the British pound is actually going lower. You can see the real world correlations here. Now we have this BRI exit, it's causing some disruption. Um, but as the, you can see that as the British pound and the DAX 30 were moving up together, one of these two signals must be must be wrong, but we've had interference from again the Brie exit, some uh, basic fundamentals. But as I've always said, that once these once the noise of some fundamental wears off, the intermarket correlations come right back, usually within a matter of days, just like this. So the DAX basically tops out, the British pound bottoms out here. You can see the DAX 30 tops out at, at this level here. It starts moving lower, that accelerates the the rally in the British pound. So a very good play there when we know what we're looking for. Now, light sweet crude oil, another major driver of, of the British pound. If oil is pushing higher, chances are the British pound is moving higher. So these are the inner market correlations that you should be watching. Now, predominantly, you can see with the FTSE, with the, the UK equity markets, as they push higher, that puts downward pressure on the British pound. And again, you can see it here as essentially as the British pound started to form a bottom at 141. Well, all of a sudden we start to form a top here on the FTSE and down goes the FTSE and the British pound ex rally to the upside accelerates. So once again, real world intermarket correlations, guys, that's what we're looking for in our trading. So we know that if we're going to trade the British pound, we should be looking at the DAX 30. We should be looking at the FTSE. We should be looking at oil prices. Even if you don't have this on your vantage point charts, you can basically Google it intraday and see, you know, is oil having an up day or a down day? Chances are if oil's having an up day, the British pound's having an up day. That's what you want to look for here, guys. Not get all tangled up with, with you know, Elliott Wave, Fibonacci, GAN, uh, overbought stochastic, overbought this. You know, it, 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 there's nothing worse than that, okay? We, we want to be very, very cautious about taking those types of signals because in most cases, real money is either moving into global equities or they're moving into the global currency. So uh, whether it be the US dollar, the British pound, the yen, etc. So right now we see money is moving into the British pound as those commodities move higher and the equities again move lower. So you know there there is a rationale for why these things happen. Okay, so when we look at pairs like the U, uh, pair like the U.S. Canadian dollar, you know it is highly correlated to the British pound U.S. dollar. It's an 
inverse correlation. But most people don't realize that, you know, when they're trading the British pound US dollar, they're actually trading US CAD also. It's having the same effect. So in case in point here, when we're looking at these types of things, okay, so if I'm going to go down here, I'm going to bring up the British pound US dollar and show everybody these correlations. You can see that basically as the Canadian dollar continued to move down the, the medium term crossover from vantage point to the downside, the British pound rallied off of that. You can, and, and again, it's, 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 uh, it's a 90% cor inverse correlation with these two. But uh, when you're looking at the US CAD, you know, for the most part, guys, you are trading oil. That's, that's what's happening here. As oil made the big push here off that $30, $39 a barrel, that basically fueled the downside on US CAD. Uh, same with gold. Gold basically contributes also, but it's not a super high correlation, but it is still very high. As gold moves aggressively higher, we can see the US CAD moves aggressively lower. So again, it's about an 85 to 90 percent correlation. So you're trading US CAD, you should be looking at oil. You should be looking at gold. Should you be looking at the equity markets too? Absolutely. Even if we look at the global equity markets like the DAX, uh, we can see that any kind of rally up here on the DAX actually tends to push the US CAD lower. So we've got some concerns on US CAD for next week. You know, if this is a true rally, uh, you know, in oil and in the DAX 30, then, you know, we've got a bit of a, you know, a conundrum right here, because uh, again, in most cases, if those equity markets are moving higher, US CAD for the most part is moving uh, lower. So this could be, again, a leading indicator here. Now that, you know, the DAX is going lower, uh, we can see when the DAX has gone lower, the US CAD is still pushed lower. So not a super high correlation there, about 60, about 60 to 70 percent, but still worthy of us to, to be looking at. Now, as we come into another major Major pair like the US Japan currency. Now, I talked extensively about this one last week, guys, uh, and I am going to run over some main numbers of what we need to look for next week on the major pairs once I do our direct intermarket correlations. Like I said, I like to change things up and basically show everybody what really drives the markets. You know, we, you know, volume is not always something that drives the market. The intermarket correlation and big money drives the market. That doesn't necessarily tie itself to something like volume, okay? Now, what I talked about last week is I said whenever I see a bar, a huge bar on a Friday, very seldom, or when there's intervention from the Bank of Japan, like what we had about those negative interest rate loans they talked about, basically we did not have any gains from that moment on. So this entire week, US Japan has sold off the entire week. And I also stated that not even, even if the global equity markets continue to push higher, it probably won't help the dollar yen. But that's not what happened. You can see that my intermarket correlations, I can basically trade guys the dollar yen without even looking at the dollar yen chart. All I have to know is am I having a positive or negative day on the global equity markets? And you can see as the DAX turns negative, the Nikkei particularly turns negative, the Hang Seng is negative, the S&P 500 also turning to the downside. There is absolutely no way that the dollar yen can move higher unless it's, again, some type of intervention from the Bank of Japan, which we can see here utterly failed. Okay, so before these equity markets started basically failing, the dollar yen had already had, was already in trouble. So when you're trading the dollar yen, guys, this is what you're trading. This is what you need to watch. So from here, what we want to do now is go in and touch base on some key, uh, some key market levels. Now, when we break it down to the main indicators from vantage point, we put our trend lines in here. We can see that it's not a free run here for the euro currency. We have a massive trend line sitting at or about 114.75 this week. We need to clear this, guys. Uh, we desperately need to clear this if the euro US is going to push to the upside. So once again, I'm going to say to you guys this week, the global equity markets will determine this. Do not get tangled up per se, with a Euro US uh, analysis solely based around the Euro US chart. Now the indicators here from vantage point look very, very good for a breakout play on Euro US, but we have to get through this level. Our key support level this week, 113.04, we would be buyers down to this level. Even if we fail at this level up here, it would still suggest to me that 
we've got a shot of breaking higher here. Now, there is the fundamental concern that, you know, the Fed is going to raise rates. I don't think it's going to be until the end of 2016. So the dollar's not going to rally strong off of that until later, probably in the third and fourth quarter. So the euro probably going to have some upside here. Our predicted MACD, everything is telling us that we likely are moving higher. But the trigger, the trigger will be a continued sell-off if the S&P 500 can get below 2035, load up on your uh, your longs here on Euro US because it is going much higher, which would indirectly push our, U our US Swiss franc lower. Now our current trend line has shifted, so we're just going to bring this in, draw it in so everybody can see. We've had a failure. You can see we've got a bar up here, two bars to the left, two bars to the right that are lower than this highest point which does create a trend line. Now our lower trend line has been breached. So if I draw this in like this, or everybody can see how I draw my trend lines, this little wedge we've broken on the outside of this. This is a very good call in my respectful opinion from vantage point. Uh, our key resistance now is 96.84, 96.85, and 96.46 with a bear, very bearish close of 95.84. So again, as long as we can stay below this trend line, about 90, the 90 730 area then shorts carry a clear edge here uh, and if but again in order for this pair to continue to move lower we must see those equities moving lower okay uh, if the equities turn around and move higher this pair will reverse very quickly just to, to be clear now our failure at the zero line on the predicted MACD and the position of the predicted RSI suggests that we are going lower on this pair now, as we look at the British pound for next week and we look, look a little bit closer here, we can see we have a trend line break. Our key vantage point levels are a bit of a concern to me. Uh, we've closed the week at 146.03, but our key vantage point level is 143.89. Now, the way I look at this is the further I move away from the 143.89 area, the more likely it is I'm going to retrace to it. Okay. What could cause a, ret a significant retracement on this pair is, of course, more chatter about the Brie exit, which I don't think we're going to get next week. But what we could get is what I had talked about earlier in the presentation is a sell off in oil con. If contracts. If oil sells off, guys, the British pound will turn lower. We could have a potentially a very good short term uh, short trade, but it would be short term in my respectful opinion. So be careful of this one. But right now we are a little bit overextended here. We can see it on the long term predicted difference from vantage point and the predicted MACD. The predicted RSI at uh, and again, we're sitting at about 78.3. We are getting a little bit uh, overbought here, but an overbought signal is not always going to be a signal that I would get, rely on, so to speak. So for now, longs carry the edge as long as the equity markets are moving lower and oil and gold is moving higher. That will fuel a continued rally uh, in the British pound. And again, knowing those key levels down to 43.89 is key. Now, with the dollar yen, what I've talked about in our very quickly in our intermarket lead in correlations, we can see here that the dollar yen continues to break its right back where we started here just basically several weeks ago. And now we have broken and closed below it. You'll notice the notch on this bar, the notch on the left is where it opened, the notch on the right is where it closed. So we have closed down at the very bottom of the range. The very next daily bar we pushed through there all the way down into the 106.28 area vicious sell-off if equities continue to move lower i don't think the bank of japan is going to be able to save the yen their money real money is going to move into the yen which would push dollar yen uh lower so right now our key vantage point level 109.87 we are overextended to the downside, much like what I just talked about with the British pound. I don't like the distance here. The further we move away from it, the more likely we're going to have a retracement of some kind. Again, that has nothing to do with Fibonacci or Elliott wave or any of this. It's simply you run out of sellers, guys. That's, you know, this is a zero sum game, buyers versus sellers. It has nothing to do with waves or Fibonacci, GAN fan, uh, fan from a GAN, all these types of things. We want to really 
really focus on what real money is doing here okay so when we look at this you know we are getting a little bit overextended here but the RSI we could still have more here guys and I want to point that out back in March we had the same situation with the RSI uh, and we did kind of flatten out but this time we are sitting much higher so we could see further downside while under 109.87 now as we look at the US CAD once again 100% dependent on those oil contracts but our key vantage point level is 127.56, 126.36 and 125.71 with a bearish close of 125.53. Now guys what I want to point out to everybody is if oil reverses, if that risk is there for a reversal in oil, this pair will reverse higher very very quickly so when you're trading this be very very cautious keep an eye on your oil contracts like i said all you have to do even if you don't have vantage point or the oil contracts just google it intraday and see you know is oil having an up day or a down day if it's having an up day then us cad is going to move lower uh, and then we we look at those key vantage point levels but for next week we need to hold below 127.56 our indicators here are the long-term predicted difference is starting to rise, but it's still uh, we st it's only at the negative 100 level. We have room to extend here. Now, as we come into our commodity currencies here, we can see we've got another top on on Aussie US again. We had a wild, crazy CPI number which sent. Uh, you can see this bar right here where it sent Aussie US crashing this is a funny very funny pair guys and it can be a very difficult pair to trade but right now uh, we do have a fairly fresh vantage point triple EMA cross right around this 7647 level we've got 7641 and 7620 very bearish close of 7599 so once again here uh, it carries a slight bearish tone we're gonna get a new trend line up here we're gonna have to back that out to find our most recent high but we also look at how did Aussie fare last year at this time so if we go back one year ago and we draw our trend line which is basically I'm not even sure that that's where we would draw it off that other high we're gonna draw it off of this one here uh, you can see that essentially that could be considered a very significant failure okay most people they, they don't go back and look at the seasonalities even if we look at the Aussie in 2000 at the beginning of uh, you know in 2000 in May of 2015 it peaked for the entire year and it was in a massive downtrend ever since okay so we we you know this this right now uh, could be considered basically a, fa a significant failure at a swing high. Does this represent some kind of wave or something? Of course not. Um, the markets are identifying the, the swing high, the failure at this level, uh, but we do have trend line support coming down here. So it's not all, you know, it's not all, uh, you know, bleak for the Aussie here. Uh, we've got pretty good support at the 75, uh, about the 75. 30 area here we've closed the, the week uh, at 75.99 so just be very cautious on this I'll just draw this in here so everybody can see this a little bit better uh, where we've got a new trend line that's formed right here at it or about the 7540 area so watch this area very closely draw your trend lines onto your chart and if we can hold this area we could see along if the equity markets rebound higher then the Aussie will likely rebound higher with it but my optimism on that right now remains heavily guarded as the predicted RSI you can see breaks through the 40 level which suggests that suggests that we have potential momentum to the downside here so uh, and again that position of that long-term vantage point predicted difference at the negative 50 level that is usually a breakout point so we are probably moving lower here uh, New Zealand has managed to basically is thriving off that Aussie weakness <laughs> that's basically what's happening here uh, I wouldn't say that the New Zealand is all that strong it's just it you know on the Australia New Zealand cross pair it's literally feeding off of that so you know as the Aussie New Zealand continues to remain under selling pressure it indirectly boosts the New Zealand US currency so when we look at the key vantage point levels if we're going to move higher on this pair then we need to hold above the 6891 level we then have 6921 and 6942 with a bullish close of 6977 so just a little bit of an explanation as to why Aussie US is moving lower and New Zealand US is moving higher it is directly related to the Aussie New Zealand cross pair and that selling pressure and that wild and crazy CPI number we got the other night but again the CPI number guys 
realistically, it's just noise. The market's going to forget about that number in probably a couple more days. <laughs> so, and then, you know, ultimately the equity markets will det determine the next move on both the Aussie and the New Zealand currency and, of course, some of those commodities. So, uh, a very tricky week next week, but if you know your levels and you know your intermarket correlations, I'm confident you will do just fine.